Tales from my D&D campaign. Previously. What if it's not a literal maze? It's psychological or something. Get the keys in your sweaty, grimy little fingers. Run for your life. And the room fades back in around you. They each have five points of positive energy resist. Positive. We resist healing? Oh, you want to go through the door. You need to go down that way to activate a room near the lower bridge. All you see is a big spider head. The half-fiendish spider begins to fall away, with little ones still clinging to it. Reflex 29. So, what's find the path say? You activated the room, so it says back up to the door. Black and Little One fly down to investigate a lower cave they spot, where they incinerate some spider eggs, possibly half-fiendish spider eggs, and return with a set of black studded leather armor from an old desiccated corpse, hoping it might be an upgrade for Daggerface. Everyone groups up in the rune room, and Draven identifies the clearly magical studded leather, while Dwarf Daggerface's aura heals everyone who is below half hit points. Because his Dragon Shaman aura is granting fast heal rather than directly healing with positive energy, it actually gets around the healing resistance from the Doom Charges, which is good, because their other main source of out-of-combat healing, a Wand of Cure Light Wounds, is made pretty much worthless by the residual effects of the disturbing visions. So, as was suspected, this studded leather is drow armor. It's plus five drow studded leather of memory. What?! Plus five drow studded leather, and every time you fail a save against a hostile spell, it gives you a plus two competence bonus against further spells from the same caster. Bonus stacks up to three times, lasts one day, or until you rest. What? That's awesome. Well, it only kicks in after you get affected by stuff from the same caster. It's more of a catch-up mechanic, but it's drow. Yes, based on your massive arcana and spellcraft, you figure that in daytime, or a daylight spell, blistering radiance, etc., its enhancement bonus drops to plus one, and the spell memory save bonus is half. It works fine at night, in darkness. In fact, it should work even in the feeble daylight of the Shadowfell, but it is a drawback. What's everyone's armor? Forget Daggerface, that's good for Angel. I have a plus four chain shirt. That's the same AC as plus five studded leather. So it does little for her, but it's a big upgrade for Daggerface. It takes some effort to convince DDF that this black elfy armor is an upgrade, or will fit him, but being magical, it resizes, and it's a huge upgrade, so they sort it out. With unknown magic involved, there's no way to be certain how long they've been down here, but unless the Dark Visions suppress bodily functions, they can't have been in the mountain more than an hour or two. So they elect to hole up in the rune room and try to rest and regain spells, including a break enchantment from Black, so Draven can save his expensive scroll for an emergency. And nothing bothers them. Really? I wouldn't think anybody would realize yet that the fiendish hell spider protecting this place is gone. They had cast some healing spells first, through the positive energy resist. And now, after resting for eight hours, Black's break enchantment clears one doom charge from each of them. I have none, right? Correct, since Angel passed every single save against the visions. With no more than one charge each now, five heal resistance, they finish topping up everyone's health at a much more reasonable spell cost, between Mora and Black's healing spells, and Draven's Wand of Cure Light. I recast Find the Path. There is a cave on the other side of the lower bridge, but Find the Path just says to head back up to the door you opened with this room. As a player, I want to explore everything, but as a character, Draven just wants to get the frack out of here. You're going to lose that desire to explore everything in about ten minutes. Ten minutes? God damn it! is it going to be another... no. You'll know what I mean when you know what I mean. Let's go. When they get back up to the door Little One had broken on the upper level, the matching door on the far side of the shaft is now open, and water has been diverted elsewhere, cut off from above, leaving a metal grate across the shaft. Across the grate is a 60-foot-long carved tunnel, and beyond that an intersection where the passage continues forward, but also branches 90 degrees left and right. Before we get too far, what's our plan for fighting a lich? The Raj has made clear that the Entity has much bigger spells than you guys, but can't keep them up forever, so if you can survive the initial assault, you should have a good chance. I was thinking of hitting him with Moonbolt. Against Undead, it cripples them. Okay. I was thinking of hitting him repeatedly until he stops moving. What if you can't reach him? It could be flying, incorporeal... Um, then I'm gonna die. It's okay, use your ranged attacks. 
I can't fly. I could teleport counter if the spirit shackle didn't stop teleports. You can fly? Very briefly. Right. Angel's gonna try to get within 15 feet of him, then cast Silence on herself. That's a good idea. If you cast Centered on yourself, there's no save. Good damn plan. Couldn't he see in Viz? Probably. Well, I'm gonna try. He's a spellcaster. Silence. The tunnels in this area are very regular. Eight feet high, eight feet wide. Though we're gonna treat that as one square wide for rules purposes. Like the area near the entrance, it may once have been magically perfect, but if so, it has decayed over time to just very smooth. For light sources, you're still running the green flame, continual flame torch, and 120 foot cone of bright light from the photon accelerator. I can give each of you Bane Undead. Well, you can have Bane Undead or Holy if you prefer. Bane gives plus two to hit, Holy doesn't. But Holy gives plus two d6 damage against anything evil, not just undead. You waiting for combat buffs, or...? It lasts a long time. Ten minutes per caster level. Holy is probably better. I don't need the plus two. Though, I say that now. I'll get Bane Undead. Taking a left at the intersection, the next turn should be right. But they also see a vertical shaft going down and Angel scouts it quickly with Spider Climb. The shaft, same 8x8 dimensions as the other tunnels, goes down about 50 feet, with a tunnel heading one way in the middle, and one heading another direction from the bottom. Oh boy. You guys are welcome to try and map it. It's okay, we're just gonna teleport out when we're done. We don't need to retrace our steps. Following Black Spell takes them right, but the tunnel splits off multiple directions almost immediately. Mapping this would be pretty difficult. It tells us where to go. Just take the direct route. Here, your spell says to go up. A good and proper maze. Excellent. Three-dimensional maze? You've seen at least four floors so far. I'm not drawing all these tunnels if you're just using find the path. There are no ladders or climbing handholds here. To ascend the vertical shafts, Angel uses spider climb, Draven flies, Little One uses searing charge, and Mora helps Black and Daggerface up with her amulet of the disc. Around here, though, you get to this point and find the path stops telling you anything. Anything? It just stops telling you where to go. Back up a little bit? Tells you to keep going forward. Not up, not down. You're in a straight tunnel with no shafts or branches within 20 feet. We could actually be where we ask to be? That's a valid theory, but you see no evidence of anything which seems like it could be the spirit shackle. Or treasure. Or Zahir. Could it be an anti-magic field? But Draven moves up next to him and the photon accelerator's light is still working. Angel searches at a 39 and casts Detect Secret Doors, but they don't find any sign of such shenanigans, nor do Detect Magic or their attempts to test it by throwing stones across the invisible boundary. Yet, when they try to continue forward, Black's internal compass is just not working in this area. The stone has changed. Is the stone moving? No, it's just different. Somewhere in this area, there's a change in the composition. The stone is very similar, and the best he can describe the change is in dwarven geological terms, which don't mean much to even those party members who speak the language. But with this hint, their skill checks finally suggest an explanation. You think about it, and you're not sure that find the path works across planes. Oh my god, we're back in the prime material plane? Don't gnomes in this setting have a sense of what plane they're on? For gnomes, it's specific to the Feywild, so Angel would probably know if you were crossing into the Fey, though she does need to see some traces of vegetation or wildlife. But natural portals don't usually stay open all day long. Maybe if we wait? It's possible, but this already seems like an abnormal one. Normally they appear in locations of special natural features, and this maze is clearly not natural. Can you cast Find the Path again in this plane? I don't have another one memorized. Is there an object that Zaheer had that we could cast Locate on? Actually, we could try Locate Creature. I'll try that. What's the range on that? More than 800 feet. You don't sense Zaheer's presence, but you note that it also doesn't work across planes. I'm sure it doesn't. Because Find the Path was working before, you're pretty sure your objective was on that plane. Right, so if the spell was telling us to go this way, there must not be another path that stays purely in the Shadowfell. And if we find a place where the maze transitions back, I bet Find the Path will start working again. Right hand rule? 
Can you try one more thing first? Let's go back to where the path worked and try locate creature there. The directions through one plane might not have any bearing on the path in another. We don't need the maze. We just need a direction. He might just be ten feet below us for all we know. We can burrow right through to him. Smash! Going through the maze is exactly what they want us to do. You must be unpredictable, or your enemies will anticipate and ambush you. When you back up into the Shadowfell, you sense that Zaheer is within range in this direction. The vector is downward somewhat, but not sharply downward. So we want to go left and down. All right, left hand rule. I'm not messing around with that. Does Daggerface have a good direction sense in here? Dwarves don't have a psychic map sense, but he does have a natural underground compass. So he always knows you're facing, and he can sense changes in depth. He'd notice something like a sneaky 0.5 degree slope. So they continue on into the Fadelands portion of the maze. Without Find the Path's instructions, Draven marks their way with chalk as they snake around some passages until they reach a downshaft. We do want to go down. Does the left-hand rule apply to three-dimensional mazes? That's the problem, isn't it? I'm okay with down. But the downshaft plops them right in the middle of a four-way intersection. Usually mazes have you turn around and go the opposite direction. This maze is insane. The left-hand rule is getting harder to adjudicate, and there's a bigger problem. While the rule is effective in two-dimensional mazes, it does often result in a very inefficient path. Here, with four floors that they know of, the distance they might have to travel to follow an inefficient left-hand route may be too extreme, so they just pick a direction, the Zaheer direction, which we arbitrarily called north, and try to head that way and down, with the idea that at some point they will probably end up smashing some walls. The next downshaft opens onto two lower levels. Let's just go down one level. Actually, we should check the bottom too, see if that gets us back to the Shadowfell. Maybe depth has something to do with it. When that doesn't pan out, there's no sign of crossing back to the Shadowfell. They instead take the mid-level of the shaft, which seems closer to the level where they expect to find Zaheer, and they continue trying to go northward, including when they hit a corner that goes in the wrong directions. Alright, mountain hammer time! By the third hit, his blade punches through to a space on the other side. By the fifth hit, after a minute, there's a hole big enough for even Black to crawl through. This way, we're still going in the right general direction. You know, there is some logic in that. North? East! <laughs> That's where I want to go. Speaking of, as soon as you start heading north, Angel notices some lichen. Uh-oh. We're the f***ing Fey? Feywild. Wait, how far down are we? How far down can we go in the Fey? See, that's the interesting thing. Because these tunnels exist in the Feylands and in the Shadowfell, it makes it possible for them to be cut out in the Fey as well. It's also quite possible that some of the rock above you, between here and the surface of the mountain, is effectively indestructible in this plane. Keep moving north. They ignore a couple branches, including an upshaft and a downshaft, but then the tunnel they're following bends south. So they backtrack a few feet and go down. Because Angel can sense the Feywild, and DDF can tell the difference between the stone in the Feylands and the Shadowfell, together they can quickly determine what plane they're on, and they have now traversed back to the Feylands. But there too, they find they can't go any farther northeast, again hitting a corner where none of the branches near them head in either of those directions. Okay then. Little One starts smashing into the walls, causing damage at the same rate as before. Sluggish, it feels, but having an impact that would be impossible for most beings. Few creatures which could fit in an 8x8 eight eight tunnel could so much as scratch the surface of the magically reinforced stone within this mountain. Still, unlike the other places where the walls were four feet thick, here he smashes and smashes and does not encounter that open space on the other side, which makes his digging a lot slower and less satisfying. And after ten minutes, though he has created a narrow tunnel well over ten feet long, there is no sense of making progress. We may have hit the edge of the maze, so we can't go any more north than this. Though, if we find anything that leads further north, that's probably the exit. I think now it's time to work our way down. So I smash the floor. Okay, you start trying to dig yourself a hole, but you do know from the shafts that it's 20 feet between floors. How long will that take? A while. But also, your technique is great, but you're going to have to start making constitution checks if you're going to keep mining with it. Mining. <laughs> 
Can we summon an Earth Elemental? They last in rounds per level, so long run, it wouldn't help much. So who makes a maze that shifts you between the planes without even casting a spell? I'm thinking Mountain Man made these tunnels. 36 Knowledge the Planes? To just create this many portals willy-nilly is probably god-level power. But in geology, there are areas where stone is softer, or maybe layers of stone are more prone to splitting apart or to erosion. You think that similarly, the planar boundaries may be more porous in this mountain, or maybe just this area where the maze is. If most places are planar bedrock, this may be more like planar sandstone. Interesting, but... I don't think that information helps us. No, but you've come up with a theoretical framework that is consistent with your observations, so intellectually, you feel more satisfied. How the hell are we going to get out of this place? Well, we've gone as far as we can north. Uh, Okay, new plan. I want to map one whole level. If there are no threats, we can just keep muddling through, but there's a lot of ground to cover. Now scout ahead. When you enter this section of hallway... All kinds of bolts spring out of the walls from all over the place. 8 damage and a DC 20 fortitude save? Fail. You leap back, avoiding most of the bolts, but one of them got you, and you take... Ow. 4 points of dex damage from the poison. Angel searches now, finding a series of pressure plates. The trap doesn't have a magical component, so she just triggers it a half dozen times till it runs out of ammunition. Unfortunately... She fails the secondary save against the poison, taking another five points of dexterity damage. Black, you have lesser restorations. You're high enough level to memorize a few every day. What am I, support? Mapping the whole level is going to take quite a while. Were you guys thinking of splitting up? Hell no! Split up in a maze? Even with her dex cut in half, Angel still has excellent search, but searching means moving along at half speed. She finds another trap, like the one which hit her, and she disarms it, but decides that in the future it's actually easier, once you find it, to just trigger them safely a few times and run them out of ammunition. Then she missed a bolt trap. She has a solid roll. She knows her check is high enough to have found those other ones, but a couple bolts shoot out at her. What's your AC with your new, temporarily shitty dex? I'm being defensive, so 25. You can't fight defensively while searching for traps. Your main action is searching, but fighting defensively is also a standard action. Okay, then 21. Ouch. Actually, it missed. What? This trap was much better hidden, but it's only a few concealed crossbows, not like the shower of arrows that got you the other time. So it was harder to find... But with only a couple bolts anywhere near you, you manage to dodge out of the way. I wonder if the traps are everywhere, or if we're getting closer. Oh, we're getting closer. In half an hour or so, they figure they've mapped about a third of the level, including seven vertical shafts, but that's it. There is nowhere else to go without changing floors. It's cut off from the rest of the maze. All right, smash this wall. We're staying on this floor. After another minute or two, he's made a big enough hole in an interior wall for them to squeeze through, and they continue on. They find and defuse another saturation bolt trap very near the dead end from which they just emerged, and then suddenly... Find the path. It's working again. Aye, this is definitely Shadowfell Stone again. It says to go back where we just came from. Locate creature lasts 10 minutes per level. It should still be going. What's it say? Further down? Hmm. It suggests slightly up. Up one floor. So let's go back, then up one floor. They backtrack into the Fade Lands, and heading up, they find themselves in an L-shaped area, where there is literally no place to go except up another shaft. Unfortunately, as Angel scouts up this shaft, she crosses a magical tripwire of some kind. Reflex save? Even with my crippled dex, I get 25. Well, that barely makes it. You hear a sound of shifting stone, and just manage to swing yourself up into the hallway at the top of the shaft as an 8x8 cube drops down from above, crashing all the way to the bottom. It's the size of the whole shaft? Yes, so, of course, it is now blocking the shaft. Though we all know Little One could smash through a corner to get around it. I'm guessing, based on my experience as a rogue, the 8-foot stone cube trap probably doesn't reload. Not an insurmountable problem, but it is kind of a pain to reach the top corner to attack. I can stand on Black's shoulders. Or I can hold you up, and as you swing at the rock, I swing you at the rock, so we hit it twice as hard. Or not. Fine. I kind of like it. We'll have to try it with Angel at some point. It does not, in fact, have additional ammunition. Though, that would be a great trap. 
It's the old cube sandwich. Based on their best non-find-the-path navigation, they seem to be on the far side of the floor from where they want to be. But they keep trying to head north, bypassing a few traps until they hit another dead end. F*** you! North! Passing through the gap, find the path tells you to go up. Shadowfell again! Yay! They begin to realize that as long as they are in the Shadowfell and able to follow the spell's guidance, the correct path, they don't find any traps. I guess that makes sense. So the further you are from the path, the more likely you are to find traps. The opposite of what I guessed before. At this point, you guys have effectively defeated the maze as a problem. Yet another problem that smashing can solve. When a big rocky fist comes out of the wall and smacks, uh, randomly determined... Mora for 20. An Earth Elemental? Mora is stuck in the middle of its 15-foot reach, making spellcasting difficult, so she tries to tumble away. Unfortunately, multiple squares of tumbling means multiple rolls, and one of them comes up bad. That sucks. So, attack of opportunity. Wait, you have a reaction to an attack of opportunity? Shield block, plus 9 AC. You get your shield in the way, but it's like a freight train, plowing through your defense and into Mora, who takes another 22. Ouch! She's getting out of combat, but since all she's done is move, and it used its attack for opportunity, she casts haste. Black is close enough to full attack, but he misses once, and since Draven's holy buff on his weapon doesn't affect neutral elementals, its 10 point damage reduction means it only takes a little damage from each hit. Little One tries to shut down its actions with disrupting blow, but it rolls well and succeeds at the will save despite its poor bonus, so he has to settle for just 18 damage after DR. Damn. Well, I switched to Iron Guard stance, so it has minus 4 to hit anyone else but me. Point blank, in the face with my Wand of Force, then I'm going to saunter away, because it's used as attack of opportunity. Woo, take 41 force. Then I saunter. Boom, bitch. That was a lot of damage and not reduced at all, but I will note that it's not bloodied. Ah! Dwarf Daggerface hits with a natural 20, and though it's immune to crits, his Mountain Hammer maneuver ignores the damage reduction, dealing 20 true damage. Then his aura heals Mora for one, since she's below half. Yay. It's really good out of combat. The Elemental manages to miss Black with both attacks, and Angel hits it, dealing solid damage from her chain's fire and cold damage crystal, even though her physical damage is too small to get through. Alright, top of the round again. No, see, going on a 2 is the second Elemental. Coming up from below, it's now occupying this space. And it still gets minus 4 to hit against anyone but me. Oh... Mora. They are just attacking anything in the hall. They don't seem to be being controlled. It's randomly going for... Mora. Rolls a 1 on the first attack. Yay! Second hits for... Ugh, near max damage. 29? She's dead. Minus 25 is more than a quarter of her max HP in the negative. Wait. Immediate action? I close wounds. Okay, you drop an instant heal before it hits her. Is it enough for her to not be squished? 12. Minus 5 because she only has one doom charge, so 7. Then she survives. She's way out of this fight, though. But she has another one from Dagger Face? Actually, that's fast heal, so it doesn't work well in the negatives. But if you can get her up to 0 HP, he can heal her all the way back up to half for free in a few minutes. For now, he attacks. It's a miss. Second attack? No. But I'm going to move over here, provoking an attack of opportunity from each of them so that everyone else is safe to move. They don't have combat reflexes. Very tanky. They need 35 to hit you. First one is barely a hit. Take 24. I do 19 back to him. So it's bloodied. Then you may or may not be happy to find out that Elder Earth Elementals have improved crit. So the fresh one crits you. Okay, bring it. It crits you for 66 damage. It rolled high on both sets of dice. Okay. So he's taking 22 plus half his damage, which is 33, so total 55. A rallying strike on the first one, take 25, and everybody heals 22. Mora's included in this? Yep, everybody's in range. Well, that makes her conscious again, so they might decide to target her again. She needs to get out of their tremor sense. You know what then? I'll pick her up. Get her off the ground. She meets your eyes, gives you a passionate gaze, he has pretty eyes, but such tiny gills. <laughs> <laughs> Draven force orbs again for 
40 damage, but then the elemental 5 foot steps out of the wall. Daggerface would be in its way, but it's so large that it's allowed to occupy the space as though he weren't even there. And apparently just smart enough to know who dealt 80 damage, so it beats on Draven for 28 and 17. And so like this, it's flanked. Yes, for those of you with a special item that allows them to crit or sneak attack elementals, so you can walk up and hit the elemental right in the stones, and it's too far out of the wall now to get the cover bonus. Activating her gauntlets, Angel sneak attacks, missing her first swing, but she gets through the DR for 20 damage, then another 17, exactly finishing it. As it starts to lose integrity, Daggerface climbs out from under it and attacks the rocky corpse. Take that! And the whole thing crumbles and dissipates. Ha ha! Dissipates, so they were summoned. The remaining elemental only hits Black for 16, taking 7 counter damage in return. Slung over Black's shoulder, Mora holds her action, playing dead. But this time, Daggerface moves up and takes the attack of opportunity. With the worst damage roll ever, deals only 14 to the dwarf, who, having recovered maneuvers in the previous round, mountain hammers again for 18 true damage. With the elemental thus distracted, Black puts Mora down so she can heal herself for 20 and move to a safer distance, while the cleric turns and hits the earth elemental for 6 after damage reduction. Well, if they haven't been resisting Angel's fire damage, nope. Inferno Blade! I hit 3 out of 4 times, so take 46, 47, and 51 damage. It does resist 10 physical damage from each hit, but that still leaves a total of 114 damage. And it's bloodied now, and I kill seal it. Well, we're technically acting on the same initiative, so we could say we killed it together. But I kill seal it. They pause a couple minutes for Daggerface's Dragon Shaman fast healing aura to bring everyone back up to half health before spending any more healing spells especially since there are still some doom charges out there. I didn't take a single point of damage that battle. They weren't positioned how I wanted. I was hoping to use their awesome blow ability to knock somebody down a shaft. Once they're ready, they get moving again, following Find the Path through the Shadowfell version of the maze until it guides them to a tunnel which is not 8x8 eight eight feet. Get out the true death crystals. This tunnel opens into a stone staircase over a chasm, deep but not seemingly endless like the last one, and at the bottom of the stairs lies a large space which holds the front of a cathedral trapped in stone. You guys are pretty sure that teleportation is possible within this area. You suspect that it's a void within the protection of the spirit shackle, but you aren't 100% sure whether you might be able to dimension door all the way out of the mountain or only teleport within this space. If I were an all-powerful lich, I would want to be able to teleport. Knowledge religion? Bardic knowledge? At first glance, this isn't one of the religions you know, but working together, the two of you think this may be a temple to the dead god, Palor. Find the path is pretty sure you should continue down these stairs, and locate creature indicates that Zaheer is in the direction of that temple. You know, if we weren't here to rescue somebody, I would just blistering radiance right off the bat. That might not be good for rescuing, but as you're discussing this, everything goes black again. Here's what has to be a image. Angel and Black save, everyone else fails, even with Little One's reroll maneuver. So we're eating popcorn, watching TV, and they're living it. You immediately feel extremely cold. It's very unpleasant, but not actually painful. It's a situation you are used to. A familiar cold having nothing to do with the frigid wind blowing across your small boat. Surrounded by the coastal arches of stone, you watch what passes for a sunset here. It looks very much like one moon going down and another rising behind the murky sky. You finish the last of the protective wards on a small box you were holding. From within your robes you pull a small, plain iron key on a chain and you seal it inside the box as you feel it coming. You rise up into the air, and after a long moment, a storm of teeth erupt from below, shattering the small wooden boat. Concentric round jaws gnash at the planks, and tentacles shoot up from within the inner mouth, trying to grab you. You lazily dodge the first couple, until you find one you like, and then grab it out of the air. The beast makes a rasping wail, but cuts short as it becomes paralyzed, bobbing in the mild waves. You note that this creature must adjust its own buoyancy somehow as it approaches the surface. Interesting. But in its dark insides you spot what you were looking for. A third inner mouth. And into it you toss the small box. There. 
it will be safe. Hovering back a little further, you wait a minute or so until the creature shudders and begins to move again. Moaning, it plunges back beneath the waves, and you cast your traveling spell, becoming one with shadow. Then the cavern and cathedral fade back in. Was that the key he used to free himself as a child? The same key, paralyzing touch and hiding its phylactery. So we can't kill it, because a lich can just reform from its phylactery. Well, I'm hoping it to free our friend and get the gold and drop the teleportation barriers and all that, that we just have to kill this form and don't actually have to track down its phylactery in the middle of the fell ocean of doom and find that razor maw. What lies within the Cathedral of the Forgotten? Next time on Tales from My D&D Campaign.